Powered by Go Goat Sports in partnership with TSN, it is episode 59 of season four of the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast. Presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey, Mark Mathot. Remember Mark Mathot, Ray? Now he's this, this developing hotshot star analyst for TSN Regional Games. Does a lot of Ottawa Senators telecasts. Former defenseman, of course, for the Sens, for the Dallas Stars, for the Columbus Blue Jackets. He is, and I'll tell him this when he joins us in the pod, one of my favorite follows on Twitter. Because, man, maybe he'll grow up in time. I mean, you no, did. No. You did. I mean, you, yeah, although you're getting point. a little bit more combative of late. Yes. Um, but, I mean, he, Meth likes to joust with his followers and isn't afraid to stir it up in a big way like he did in going after Winnipeg, like, what was it, a month, month and a half ago? Yeah. Which, I mean, it obviously crossed a bit of a line, you know, talking about how crappy Winnipeg is and all that. But he does have a, a – he's got a, a sense of humor that makes me laugh. Yeah, you know what I like when he starts, you know, poking the bear there is he'll go, all right, I'm done. I'm going to the gym. See you later. <laughs> and, and whether he's reading anymore or not, I just I just love that tactic because he's he's going on with his day. I mean, we all got – a certain amount of time and then you're like okay no more time for this nonsense <laughs> um but he just drops it and goes okay i'm going to the gym see ya i think it was him who tweeted something along the lines of does anyone else have young boys who every time <laughs> you sit down on the toilet you realize that you have young boys whose aim isn't very good <laughs> Like he does, I, you know what, for me, that's what social media is all about. Like we get wrapped up and by we, I mean, society in general in too much of the serious uh, and right. there's enough conflict and whatnot in all of our lives and worldwide that we shouldn't have to, you know, deal with any of that. So everyone's going to give you one little story from when my older boys were younger. Yeah. So Landon was about, Landon's 32 mm -hmm. now. So I don't know, he was probably four or something like that. And he's going pee like a little kid does, you know, his pants are dropped right down to his, to his ankles. And, and I, uh, and I, I walked by and I needed to tell him something. I'm like, Hey, Landon. And he just turns while he's going, <laughs> of course he would. <laughs> while he's going pee, and he's now peeing on the side wall. <laughs> and he didn't even, it didn't even phase him. Right. Nah. Like, like, eh. You know, I, I, I tried my best when the kids were in diapers you know, you try your best. I wasn't, I wasn't good at the diaper change. Um, I mean, nobody likes doing it. I tried to help out. And it was like every time, it was like this karmic justice. And Mason Gregor, I'd go to change. And inevitably, man, as I'm just pulling off the, oh, yeah. the diaper, like, and it like would, would, hit me automatically i'm like come on man like what are we doing here he was like he's like i've got freedom <laughs> let's just get this done so there you go see mark Mathot just he's, without even being on the podcast yet he's yep. taking us into a completely different world all right let's uh head over to headlines right and uh we'll get to the series momentarily here but the news of the day as we record here on uh tuesday april 25th is the suspension of star defenseman Kale McCarr of the Colorado Avalanche, the Department of Player Safety, announcing today a one-game suspension for his hit on Seattle's Jared McCann. McCann will not be available for Game 5. So that is a blow to the Kraken, obviously, considering his influence and impact on that team. Is this fair justice for you? Uh, I, I always have a hard time with this, in particular in the playoffs. And, and this is why, Dreg. So I'll give you the the Michael Bunting suspension. So he got three games Bunting's coming back or is available to be back um, in game five and Tampa still doesn't have Eric Chernak. And so that I always have a tough time kind of putting those two things together. Yeah, it matters. Um, you know, like Jared McCann's a really important part of Seattle and it's alarming somewhat that, you know, he would be ruled out so quickly for game five, which probably means game six is in jeopardy too. Mm -hmm. And so for Seattle, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, certainly a, you know, a huge loss for, for Colorado. They really feel like they're just hanging by a thread. I mean, they, they lose Val Nachuskin, who's 
you know, who's left the team for personal reasons. And um, now Makar is suspended. They don't have Landis Gog and on and on and on and on it goes for them. And um, that's a big loss for them going back home for game five, because if they lose there, yeah. it's no, there's no easy cake uh, heading into Seattle for game six. But that's a one gamer for you. I mean, again, it's playoff hockey. Yeah, but I, I, I don't, yeah. yeah, it's playoff hockey. So does that mean you can be as much a knucklehead as you want and take comfort yeah. in that it'll only be one game? I'm the the puck is nowhere near where McCann gets hit. Yeah. So I, I'm. You can all. We will always debate the length of a suspension. I think I would be more rattled if it was no games and just a fine. All right, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. A huge comeback uh, in game four of that series, Ray. I mean, what a series it's been between the Lightning and the Maple Leafs. But in fairness, we could say that about pretty much every series in round one because the hockey has been entertaining. There's been controversy. There's always the age-old discussion on officiating and all of that. Um, The Leafs dug themselves an enormous hole. 4-1, they're down. Dave Poulin and I and James Duthie are sitting in studio and we're watching this. And I remember saying to those two guys, you know, early in the third period, is there any chance the Tampa Lightning gag on a three goal lead? And both of them said, no, not, not with this level of experience. And then Matthews scores the wrister. And then Matthew scores the deflection goal of beauty on the power play. And then Morgan Riley, who's developed into an unbelievable story through a handful of games, he finds a way to send this thing in overtime and you've got another deflection and the Kerfoot goal to end it. So you've been a believer in the Maple Leafs. You know, you Mm -hmm. you talked about them coming into this series. So measure your level of surprise when you, you, you were doing the New Jersey, New Ranger, uh, New York Ranger games. We'll get to that one too. But as you're looking at the out of town scoreboard and you see four, one, do you think game set and match at that point? Yeah, I do. Um, but I will say this. So I, I think there's a, there's a little bit of a, a misdiagnosis of Tampa right now. You know, like you said, with this level of experience, Darren Radish is a rookie. Yeah. Nick Perbix is a rookie. Um, they're, they're in their top six. They're playing significant minutes for Tampa. They don't have Eric Chernak. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about a different team here. Agreed. You know, look up front and the number of guys, like we look at Tampa, like these guys have all been to the Stanley Cup finals three three years in a row. A lot of them haven't. A lot of them do not have a Stanley Cup. Like 10 of them in the lineup don't have a Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. I think that's the number. So it's a different team. And I, I think there's some scabs on the leaf, like, or on the Leafs, like, you know, like they've, They've got some toughened up scabs here that they've been kicked in the pants a few times. And man, it's, it's lucky and fortunate and all that thing that could be able to come back from three goals, but they didn't fold. No. Now it's not a winning, it's not a winning formula. Like they're, you're not beating Boston in the next round. If you're down three goals yeah. to them, you might once, but your chances are you're not, but they, should take heart in the fact that they found a way to dig themselves out of the hole. Yeah. But I would say Dregs, put it away early, put Mm -hmm. it away as fast as you can. Don't let Tampa hang around for game six. Now, I don't know. I know John Cooper came out and defended Andre Vasilevsky today. I'm not really sure what's going on, but with him, but some of the goals that go in look very odd. The Riley tying goal hit the middle of the net. Yeah. He totally overplayed that shot. As Riley's going to his right, Vasilevsky way overcommitted to that side. Riley's stick is on the left side of the net. Mm -hmm. He left that whole side open. That's very un-Vasilevsky like. And so there's, you know, you can say, oh yeah, he could, you know, he could stop 50 shots tomorrow. Well, right now he's got an 850 save percentage and They'd probably like him to get it to 900. Yeah. So if if the group that dominated that third period last night for the Maple Leafs, Matthews, Marner, Nylander, you know, Tavares was was effective. Um, Morgan Riley, obviously, the goaltending was solid enough. Luke Shen has developed into a nice story on on that back end. If that group starts game five the way they ended, you're saying that the series should end, shouldn't it? 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. But however, I don't think, I, I mean, you got it. There's always two sides to this thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I do think Toronto can wrap this up if they play a period like they did uh, last night. Yeah. However, Tampa's still over there. Oh yeah. yeah. You got to think they'll be better than they were in the third period. It's a six minute chunk of time that they took a snooze. Yeah. And I, I just, there's so many ebbs and flows and you, you touched on it drags at the start here about the playoffs themselves, the ups and downs and ins and outs of these games are yeah. really hard to predict. And I, I think that's a really good thing. I also think it's never been easier to play on the road than it is now. Yeah. And if you look at the number of road teams um, that have won in the first round, it's uh, they're way over 50%. I mean, I'm doing the devil's Rangers and, Rangers won two in Jersey. Jersey comes back, wins two in New York. And it's, um, you know, it just seems like it's, it, the road is a more comfortable place to play now than it used to be. Hmm. We've got Mark Mathot who will join us on the podcast today. And we'll talk more about Toronto and Tampa Bay because he likes to twist the knife there. Of course he would. I mean, so connected to the Ottawa Senators. That makes some sense. Lump two series into one here if you can. And you just mentioned the Rangers and the Devils. What do you see there moving forward? Now it's a best of three. And, you know, Florida, Boston, you know, is Florida done just because of the power of the Bruins? Well, we'll, we'll start with uh, Tampa or, or sorry, with the Rangers and the Devils. I was really impressed uh, with the Devils and, you know, they, they hadn't given the Rangers much last night. Trocek scores in the third period for the first time, the building came alive. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, if they're going to break, it's going to be now. And they didn't. Uh, Akira Schmid was a terrific story in game three. He didn't have anything to do in game four. Yeah. Like he, he played well, but he didn't have much to do. That being said is that the devils played a really good road game. Now I went and did, I had this memory of last year. I'm like, man, I think Kreider and, and Zabanajad took a nap in the middle of the Pittsburgh series. So I went and looked and in games three, four, and five, they had zero goals, the mm -hmm. two of them. And then in game six, two for Zabanajad, two for Kreider, a goal each in game seven. Yeah. Like those guys have to play. And, and, and they, my point is they just did it last year. Mm -hmm. Panarin doesn't have a goal in the series. So if we're looking where the series can change, it's, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Florida, how much push left? I, I, I think they're on fumes. Yeah. Um, if there's one guy I look at that can maybe impact uh, and initiate a change, it would be uh, Sasha Barkov, who has just been a ghost in the series. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if something's bugging him or what, but just no factor uh, mm -hmm. outside of game two. He was really good. Um, man, this is a big, strong player who makes people have to defend him all the time. Yeah. He he just has he just hasn't had any impact on the series, and he's got to be great tomorrow. Now, if if Sam Bennett can't play, oof, that's a yeah. that's a huge loss to a already pretty thin Florida team. How impressed are you with the Carolina Hurricanes to this point? This is okay, really impressed. <laughs> but this is the perfect type of series for them because if they've got to get into a series where they need to score three and four goals to win, I think they'll lose. Mm. Like the Islanders don't score a lot. I thought, I, I think if you, you know, if you rattle the marbles around Dregs, you'll remember. Yes. I said, like, yes. Carolina and the Islanders play the same game. Carolina just plays it better. Yeah. And here we are in the, you know, and it's a low scoring, tight checking series. And I mean, if you can name Carolina's roster or who's next up on <laughs> the depth luck. chart, good for you. But, um, you know, it's played out kind of how I thought that the games would be really tight really low scoring. I just think Carolina's better at it than the Islanders. Well, talk about the next man up theory in Winnipeg, man. They are so unmanned right now, yeah. undermanned against the, the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. Mark Shifley leaves that game with injury. It's not a hundred percent certain likely he's done for the series. We know Josh Morrissey um, is done for the series. That is just too tall an order, isn't it? Against the team that, got healthy at the right time or is getting healthier mm. as the first round unfolds in Vegas. Yeah. They, um, 
this feels like they're in a fight and they're punching a much bigger guy. Yeah. You know, like their, their physical play, which is a, you know, a, a real important part of their game um, dwindles away with the, the loss of skill of and production of Shifley and Morrissey. And you just can't make that up. I, I would find it really hard to believe that Winnipeg could come all the way back in this series. What do you think of Edmonton and LA as advertised? I mean, we didn't oh, love it. Yeah. Well, like we didn't expect that the Los Angeles Kings were, were going to get shoved around quite the opposite. I mean, Edmonton has had to earn their wins no different than LA, mm-hmm. but this series is going to be one for the ages. I mean, just about it's almost a shame, ball. Drake. It's a shame, isn't it? Like that these two teams are playing in the first round. Yeah. Because a really good team, of course, is going to go home here. Yeah. And just when you think you've got this game or this series figured out, it gets flipped on its ear. Hmm. You know, game one, the Oilers have it in their pocket. Then all of a sudden they don't. Yeah. Game four, Ellie's totally in control. And then they're not. Yeah. And then they still get the lead and they can't hold it. The the one crack there is, you know, Corpus Allo had, gave up a couple of bad goals at the end of game four. Mm-hmm. And now that becomes a question mark. And then Stu Skinner got pulled in, in the Edmonton goal and he's going to be back for game five. So real interesting goaltending matchup for game five. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I mean, as you get later into the series, things start to just settle down a little bit too, right? I mean, there's not as much nonsense, but yeah, it settles down, but it becomes more predictable because now you've seen those teams play against each other a couple of times. So I'll give you an example. The Rangers score four power play goals, the first two games, Mm -hmm. then they go zero for 11. Yeah. Since then. So, Clearly, the Devils have adjusted. Now, can the Rangers readjust? Mm-hmm. And that's part of the thing when you play the same team over and over. It becomes predictable, and then you're like, who can get an edge? Who can make an adjustment? It's it's one of the reasons why playoff hockey is so great. I purposely didn't bring up officiating. Um, we'll talk a little bit with Mark the Thought on that to get his his thinking because it's it's an annual event, right? We complain about officiating uh, as a fan base and media every single year in the first round, and it's old, and I'm tired of it. But I will say this, and I mentioned it on SportsCenter uh, on Monday. Like, it's not like the NHL is turning a, a deaf ear to any of this stuff. Like, they, they grow weary with the coaches constantly yelling or complaining post game. So, rather than warn the coaches, I'm told what will happen is if they cross the line, of course, they get fined. We've seen that before. Maybe more punitive is the idea of a bench minor. You imagine getting that penalty in the third period of a deciding game. And the opposing team scores in the power play, you lose a series. Could happen. It could happen. Well, what they should do is before they get to that, is make sure all of the coaches understand that the standard will be tightened up. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna dance around behind the bench and scream and yell and all that, if that's what they want to do, make sure they're warned so nobody can complain after and say, Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Make sure they're warned. And then move ahead with it. I I myself, Drakes, two things. One is there's more penalties committed in the playoffs than in the regular season. And it's impossible to call them all. Mm-hmm. It really is. And the reason there are more penalties committed is because the stakes of the game are higher. Yeah. However, I think the officials have stayed pretty close to the regular season standard. Yeah. I don't think it should change for the playoffs. And so I... If there's five penalties in a game, five power plays, well, then that's your fault. Don't make five fouls. Mm-hmm. So I I really don't have a, the games I've done. I don't really have a, a problem with the way the games are officiated. I know the losing coach hates the officiating every game. The same thing. Every game. It's been that way since 19 forever. Mm-hmm. Right? It's been that way forever. And it's always going to be the same. Those are your headlines. Our interviews on Ray and Regs this year brought to you by Canadian Club Whiskey, who are asking, are you over beer? Why not try a refreshing CC ginger ale? Toss in a line next time you're having a drink or watching the playoffs.